It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to this edition of You Can Make It with David Farrell, the old fat guy. That's me. Today I'm going to just be giving a basic lesson in how to do spare ribs without foiling them. I like to call these spare ribs bob ribs or bite off the bone ribs. The other method of doing ribs in a smoker is to do them with three hours of smoke, foiling them for two hours, and then putting sauce on for an hour or three to one method. I call those fob ribs or fall off the bone ribs. It all depends on your personal taste. Now what I have here is some St. Louis cut spare ribs. The breastbone's taken off and there's just a strip of the nice bones. This flap here can come off but I'm going to leave it on because I'm feeling lazy today. And you'll note that there is a membrane on this side of the ribs. Now some people tell you you don't have to take the membrane off. Personally I like to take it off because I think it lets the flavors get into the meat more. So you just have to start at one corner of the membrane and kind of cut it off. There we go. When you got a little bit cut off, just take some paper towel and use it to pinch the bit you've lifted up and it'll pull right off. Well, supposed to. It didn't do too well that time, but when it doesn't, you just give it another little lift on a corner. There we go. And grab it with a paper towel and keep peeling it off until you've taken the membrane off the ribs. Now, in any basic rib, the first thing you do is you put some rub on the ribs to give another layer of flavor. And I have some of my homemade basic barbecue rub. If you want the recipe, it's on my blog, oldfatguy.ca. But you can use any barbecue rub you like. So I'm just going to put a good coating of barbecue rub on both sides of the ribs. There we go. Now, some people will tell you to leave the ribs in the rub, in the fridge, for overnight. I find just an hour or so does fine, but if you have overnight, go ahead and feel free to leave them in the fridge. What it does is it gives a good dry surface on the rib that lets it take smoke well, and it gives a bit of chance for the flavor from the rub to get into the meat. Okay, so I'm just going to let these sit now, and then I'm going to put them in my smoker. So I'll see you out at my smoker soon. So I've put my ribs into a 230 degree smoker, and you'll see that I've attached the probe from my remote thermometer so I can keep track of the internal temperature of the meat. Because when you're doing bob ribs, or bite off the bone ribs, the trick is to smoke them to an internal temperature and not by time. So I'm going to smoke these to an internal temperature of 185 degree Fahrenheit. When that happens, we'll get back out here and finish up the ribs. See you then. Okay, the ribs have been out in the 230 degree smoker for about two hours, and my remote thermometer tells me that they're at an internal temperature of 185 degrees Fahrenheit. But the thing about ribs, as you can see, they're quite thin, and there's bones in there. And I'm very careful to put the probe in between two ribs so it doesn't touch any bones. But just to make sure, I always like to give it a check with my instant read thermometer. Yeah, 185, perfect. So now that we've got the ribs at 185 degrees, we want to put some sauce on them. You can use any barbecue sauce. I'm using some maple, uh, excuse me, some Rufus Teague's maple whiskey uh, barbecue sauce. You can use any sauce you like. And we just want to give it a brush with the sauce. Get it nice and shiny. Flip it over. 
to do the other side. And we're going to let this sit after I've brushed both sides and smoke for another 30 minutes. And then we're going to give it another brush of the sauce and let it sit for 30 minutes longer just to set the sauce so that it's more like a glaze than all sloppy and saucy. So we'll be back here in about 30 minutes and we'll take a look at how the ribs are doing after I've put the second sauce on them and take them inside. See you in a while. So the ribs had 30 minutes in the smoker after I brushed them. I flipped them and brushed them again for another 30 minutes and I like to let them sit for five or six minutes before I eat them. And here they are. They look pretty good. Got a nice red color, good sticky coating on them. So we'll just cut between a couple of the bones. There we go. There we go in here. Okay, sorry, cut right into a bone. And you can see they got a wonderful smoke ring there. See again, lovely smoke ring, and they slice nice and easily, and the meat isn't pulling off the bone as I slice them. So, mm, the reason I call them Bob is because they're bite off the bone. If these were fall off the bone, the meat would be pulling it off as I was slicing, I'd barely be able to lift it. And the other secret to seeing if it truly is Bob or bite off the bone is to take one of the ribs and take a bite. Mm. You can see the meat pulls easily from the bone, but leaves a perfect bite mark and doesn't fall apart. This is a really good rib. It's got a good chew texture on it, but still comes off the bone. Mm. If you like your ribs with some chew, try Bob Ribs, because you can make it. I have a good woman, I ain't good looking, but I do some cooking, I'm the old fat guy. So use that oven, if you want some loving, be like the old fat guy. Like the old fat guy.